Okay, now solving multi-step equations. We did one step, we did two steps. Now this involves two or more steps. I'm still going to think of these as two-step equations, and I'll show you why. So let's look at the first example. Two-step equations make sense to you? I promise I'll make this just as simple as those. Okay, now, anytime you solve an equation, you always want to make sure that it's the simplest form possible. So anytime you have an equation, you want to make sure you solve it by simplifying first. So let's look at this one. Is there any way I can make this simpler? What I mean by simpler is put any terms together, put any constants together, add combine like terms in any way that you can to make this look shorter. On the right side, negative 3 is as short as it can get. I can't make this any simpler, it's just a number. But on the left side, I have m and some more m's. So I can put these m terms together and compact them into one term. So I'm going to do that because it will make it look simpler. Negative 2m and a 4m. So they are still m's, but now I have two of them. Plus 5 equals negative 3. So what I just did is not even solving yet. I am just simplifying this to make it as simple as can be. Now again, that one's as simple as it gets. Can I make this even simpler? Well, can I combine these together? 2m plus 5? And the answer is no. You can't. You can only combine numbers with numbers, or constants with constants, and variable terms with the same variable term. So in this case, there's nothing else to pair them up with. So now we're ready to solve. So from here down, we're solving. And from here up, we were just simplifying. Now, even though it says multi-step equations, most of the steps will be simplifying. Once you get to the solving step, it will always be a two-step solving problem. So, again, from here down, m needs to be all alone. There are two numbers to eliminate, the 2 and the 5. Which one goes first? Always addition or subtraction first. So I'm going to undo this addition by subtracting 5 second number that needs to go is the 2. I know that's multiplication. That's the variable. So the inverse operation is to divide by 2. So I've mapped out, planned out what I'm going to do. So let's go ahead and start. Oops. Subtract 5 on both sides. I'm left with negative 8 on this side. Negative 3 and the negative 5. There are no zero pairs. Nothing cancels. All the negatives are still there. And 2m is left over here. And now I'm ready to divide by 2. And I just like to switch colors so you can see what I'm doing. Um, this is a new step. I'm multiplying by 2, so I'm dividing by 2. 2 divided by 2 is an invisible 1. And negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. m is negative 4. So that was a multi-step equation. Let's do one more, or two more. Another thing that you need to remember is the distributive property. So you can think about that. Do you remember what the distributive property is and how to use it? Distribute means to share, to give things to others. So think of it as sharing the two. The two is going to get distributed into the parentheses. And I usually just put a little multiplication sign here to remind me that as the two jumps in, it's getting multiplied. And as the 2 jumps in again, it gets multiplied. And that's it. That's as far as we go because it's only to the terms on the inside of the parentheses. And again, right now, all we're doing is simplifying this. I don't like how those parentheses look. This, ex uh, this equation and expression looks a little bit more complex because of those parentheses. If I distribute, the parentheses will no longer be there. So I'm going to distribute, and it should look a lot simpler. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10x. And this guy just tags along. It did not become part of the distributed property, but it's still there. Now, this does look simpler than this. 
So that was the first thing we did. And then we needed the parentheses. Now let's take another look. Could it get simpler or is that as simple as it's going to get? Are there any things I can put together to make this look shorter and simpler? And the answer is yes. I can put these guys together. Numbers can always go together. So 2 plus 4 is 6. And the negative 10x doesn't have a partner, so it's just going to tag along in the front. Squeeze this in there. Sorry, it's all tight in there. And then negative 8. So that looks simpler. Let me rewrite it. That's going to look smashed together. Okay. So simplified by distributing, simplified by combining like terms, and there's nothing else I can do now. That's a variable term with no partner. That's a number term with no partner. So that's it. I can't do anything else to make it simpler and shorter. So from here up, I simplify. Oh, I simplify, I simplify. And from here down, now I'm going to start solving. And remember, every time we solve, you should be at the point where it's just a two-step equation. So even though it's called multi-step, it's really just simplify, simplify, simplify until you're down to just two steps. And I always think of solving as reversing operations. So inverse operations is always going to be two steps. The first inverse operation is reversing this addition with a subtraction of 6. The second inverse operation is going to be reversing that multiplication of 10 by dividing by negative 10. Now it has to be negative 10 because you want to get that 1. So let's go ahead and do that now. Negative 6 plus 0. This is negative 14. And this is still negative 10x. And now we divide by negative 10. Negative 10 divided by negative 10 is invisible 1x. We can just do it like that. And again, negative divided by negative is a positive. Dividing by 10 makes it one place value smaller to the left. So I can just take this invisible decimal to the left and get 1.4. And that is your answer. So majority of the work is a simplifying. Simplify, simplify, simplify. And then once you're down to just two terms, that's going to just be your two-step equation. So it might sound like you're solving a big thing, but you're really just solving a two-step equation with a lot of simplifying. Example three. And this is our last example. Some of us are afraid of fractions or get intimidated. I'm going to show you how simple this is, especially in our textbook at this level. They make sure that the fractions always work out nicely. Wow, this one looks really complex. One step at a time, and it's very doable. Now, again, we want x. I don't know how far it should go. Let's go down here. So what you're going to do now is notice that there's two sets of parentheses that I don't like. So I want to simplify it and get rid of them. There's one set here for the distributive property and another set of distributive properties here. So I'm going to go ahead and do two distributive properties to eliminate both sets of parentheses. Now, I yes, this is a fraction, and yes, I'm going to multiply that in there. Now, when you multiply fractions, in case you forgot, when you multiply fractions, like let's say 1 third times 4, you need another denominator. You have to have four numbers, because the top goes with the top, the bottom goes with the bottom. You multiply straight across, and you get 4 thirds. And I, I like to say swoosh straight across. That's how you multiply your fractions. So top number with top number, bottom number with bottom number. Now when I do that here, I need a bottom number. So this top number goes with the 3x and the bottom number doesn't have a partner. So I'm going to go ahead and put a 1 here. So now 1 times 3x is the top swoosh. And the bottom swoosh, 3 times 1. And now 1 times 9, that will be the top number. 
and 3 times 1 will be the two bottom numbers, straight across. And 3 divided by 3 is just x, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. You could skip this step if you want, if you just tell yourself, what's one third of 3? Remember, of means multiply. Remember that from 6th grade or 7th grade? Um, anytime you see the word of, it represents a multiplication. So, what's one third of 3? 1. What's one third of 9? 3. It's another way to do it. Some of those can do this in our head a little faster. Alright, so now I have a distributed property on this side. I can add the opposite. Negative 2 times x is, I'm going to put it down here, make sure there's no fraction. Negative 2x and negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. And all of this equals 12. So I distributed, got rid of the parentheses on these terms, and then I distributed again and got rid of the parentheses on the second term. So now, at this point, is there anything I can do to make these look simpler and shorter? I have 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. The answer is yes. I have an x term here and an x term here, a number term here and a number term here. So they all have partners. So we're going to put them together. This is a negative 2. I'm, I'm going to stop doing the 2-stick rule because when I see 2-stick rule and I see negative 2, it's going to be negative with the subtraction. So you'll get used to seeing it that way. 1x, take away 2x, I'm left with negative x or negative invisible 1x. Then when I put this 3 with the 6, I get 9. Okay. And now I'm back to the two-step equation. I can't put this with anything else. I can't put this combined with anything else. That's as simple as it's going to get. From here down, we're going to start to solve. This was all simplified. Now I'm ready to solve, which means inverse operation time. I see addition. That's where I should start. Or subtraction. That's a subtraction of 9 to reverse the addition. This is going to be an invisible negative 1. So the opposite of multiplying by negative 1 would be to divide by negative 1. Sometimes you need to see it. So just put it for you. <coughs> so, subtracting 9. Oops, make this blue. Subtract 9 on both sides. I'm just alternating colors so you can see the step. That's a 0. And that's going to give you positive 3. And I still have a negative 1x. I'll leave that here. So negative 1x is still here. And now on this side I'm totaling 3. And now my next step I know is to divide by negative 1. You might look, might look like x is all alone, but we got to still get rid of that negative 1. Negative 1 divided by negative 1 now gives me positive x. And 3 divided by negative 1 gives me a negative 3. So different signs, negative, same sign, positive. We're multiplying or dividing. And that's how you solve multi-step equations. So again, multi-step equations, you're just really mostly a simplifying followed by a two-step inverse operation problem. Okay, all right, and that's it.